Now, oh, good day, folks. Well, for uh, a nice Wednesday night project, I brought home this DWM Copeland semi hermetic compressor, which has hit the ground fairly hard. The terminal box is a bit of a mess, but it actually ohms up all right. I don't think they threw it out because it was electrically faulty, either they just got rid of the condensing unit that it was in, or maybe it's munched up inside, so... Yeah, the oil's well used, it's got that nice yellow tint tinge to it, but I've seen perfectly good operable compressors with the same coloured oil. And it's also dual voltage, so I can run this on 240 volts. Which is what I think what they've been doing. At least... Yeah... I'm pretty sure they've been running it on 240 because they're tapping their fans straight off it. So that'll be 240 volt configuration. They're probably running it off a of VFD. We've got one, two, and three. They'll have little marks on them. So they're probably running it off a of VFD similar to mine, maybe just a little bit bigger. Or maybe even capacitor running it. I couldn't find the terminal box for it. The coil was there, but they've chopped all the copper out of it. The terminal box was gone. Oh, I mean the control box for the condenser. So there's obviously no um, no controls or anything for it. There was the remains of a pressure control on there, but it had had its copper lines chopped off. Funny thing is they ripped all the copper out for scrap, but they didn't bother collecting the coil. They just threw it in the steel pile. Oh, well, people do funny things. That was in there too. That connects up to the uh, temperature switch. So I'm guessing that would be a thermal cutout. It probably sends a signal back to control to say shut down when it gets too hot. And likewise it has two neutral wires coming off of the fans as well, so it's, I don't know. Motorschutz INT69. This is all made in Germany by the way. Uh, don't know what DWM means. I mean, I do know the name DWM, as in Deutsche Waffen and Munition Work. Uh, but this isn't exactly a cannon or a piece of ammunition. It's a compressor. So either DWM is making compressors now, or I actually think DWM went out of the out of business at the end of World War II because they were one of the biggest suppliers for the German army. They made the famous Luger, beautiful pistol, absolutely beautiful. If you ever fired one, yeah, there's something different. Very well balanced, but yeah, this isn't DWM as in Deutsche Waffen and Munition Work. This is Copeland, made in Germany. So, yes, um, motor specs, which you probably can't see because this camera doesn't like focusing on that plate. Uh, 1450 RPM, so it's a four pole motor. It is. Uh, what is it? 22240 volts, 12.6 amps, or 7.3 amps on 380 to 415 volts, or 420 volts. Horsepower, I think it's about three. 3 kilowatts, so about 4 horsepower. Bit much for my VFD, but I'm going to hook some capacitors up to it and see what I can do. At least until I can get a 4 kilowatt VFD and give it a try. There's also a diagram in there for star delta start or direct online start configuration. Um, how to hook your fans up off the terminal block, that sort of thing. It's not awfully that old and Electrically it tested up alright with the meter. I can't I don't have a mega meter yet, so I can't do a full insulation test. But if anything, either it's munched or they just pulled the system out and decided they didn't want to keep it as a second handy. Which is a bit of a shame. It's in good condition, it's not that old. So let's top the oil up. Most of the oil drained out on the ground, so I'll top the oil up and we'll put some power to it and see if it makes some noises. Now and that temperature sender reads I think it was about 240 ohms. So, I'm guessing it's a thermistor, not just a, a temperature switch. It just tells it when it's starting to get warm and then start, turns the fans on or turns it off or whatever. So this doesn't have suction cooling as far as I can tell. A lot of these refrigerant compressors, like this one here, had suction line cooling. The, the suction side was attached to the end bell over the motor. And suction line gases had to pass through the motor stator and rotor before they could get up into the head. But this one doesn't seem to have it. It's just pure convection and fan cooling if you put a fan on top of it. Some of them have a shroud with a fan on top of them. Particularly if they're in a pack rack for a supermarket or something like that. Uh, YouTuber Heavy Diesel just did a, a 
decommission on a large supermarket pack rack system. Um, yeah, it's an interesting video. He doesn't have time to stand there and explain everything to you, and it's probably too noisy in there, but it's a good quick look around a uh, supermarket system, including the condensers on the rooftop. But yeah, let's top this oil up and get the show on the road. Ah, you gotta love how easy a chain hoist makes things. You definitely don't want to lift this thing by hand. <laughs> no way. There's a grub screw under there too, that's for the dra oil drain. Whatever the hell that is. I think there's a screw in there. Either that or it's a coolant passage for an oil cooler. It's awfully rusty and deep. Okay, well it does run, pulls about 20 amps on single phase, but it works. The oil's a bit evil. Well, it does run. Got it running off a kickstart kit. Uh, that's the oil pump end housing. I decided to take it off and work out which way it was running and whether the oil pump would work. And apparently it's actually bi-directional. Um, yeah, the stator pack looks good. I can see the windings from here. They're not burnt. They ohmed up fine. Mm. Still plenty of oil in it, although it looks pretty evil. Had a hard life. Big end wears fine. They're not sloppy. They're not flopping around. There's no metallic particles in the bottom. I can actually see the grind marks on that base plate. There's no metallic sludge or anything. This thing's serviceable. There's nothing wrong with it new gasket of course before we put it back together for refrigeration but I want to run this thing on single phase as an air compressor you can still see the honing marks and the bores it's in really good condition I mean, we'll just jog the motor momentarily and hold me flashlight steady running out of lube on those bearings but it's working main reason I believe the pumps bi-directional is because of that little thing there at the moment it's running counterclockwise from the compressor end but this thing here just seems to rotate either way if I change direction it'll spin around and again we get oil spewing out everywhere So. It's a bi-directional pump. It's kind of interesting. Don't know if the Bitsa has the same type of pump in it. Probably not. But either way, that's pretty cool. I'm going to change the oil on this. We'll bolt the pump back up. Maybe put a little bit of mastic or something on it. And we'll try and make a decent sized air compressor. I really need another VFD though. Maybe a 4 horsepower or 5 horsepower 240 volt VFD to run it properly but that's going to make one kick-ass air compressor I can tell you now, two pistons that big, that's going to move a hell of a lot of air mind you, this one will be good with a diesel attached to it, probably the Yanmar diesel we'll put the Yanmar diesel coupled up to that thing and a couple of LPG tanks, the stainless ones for receivers that'll uh, make a good sandblasting unit put it on wheels as a mini trailer type thing beautiful I'm using a kickstart hard start kit as well as a run capacitor. It will not start on its own on a run cap because it's, it is a 5 horsepower motor. But that's good. Thanks for watching. You can definitely bi directional oil pump. Mm -hmm. No, just talking to the camera. <laughs> Dad's working on his bike again, so 
That's what the funny noises in the background are. Oh, that's probably one of the dumbest things I've ever done. Well, with a three-phase motor anyway. I forgot to change the configuration. I'm trying to run it in 415 star with 240 volts. I've got to take these bridge plates off and put them across the pins into 240 volt delta. Yeah, it might run a little bit better when I do that, but yeah, you know how it is. I'm just mounting the king valve up and I realised, huh, it's still in 415 mode. <coughs> it still works, but it pulls a lot of amps. 21 amps, 22 amps. Roughly double what it's supposed to pull. And that's not even under load. It should pull 12, 12 12.5 or something maximum on 240 volt three phase. Single phasing, I'll give it maybe another four or five amps. But the motor in this thing isn't much bigger than, say, a large single phase air conditioner like the one I've got on the shed at the moment. 8.8 .8 kilowatt Fujitsu air conditioner pulls roughly the same amps that this compressor will but this one's made for industrial refrigeration use if not something much bigger but still the motor shouldn't pull that much amperage okay we've got it wired properly this time let's try again oh in case you're wondering how to wire one like this I have the common common on L3 active on L1 and the capacitor is going to L2 but you can also alternate L1, L3 and L1 and it still works the same it actually reverses direction I think I can't quite remember but that wire there is this one here going to L2 and that one there is going to common So pretty straightforward you just have your active going to one pole and one alone and you have your capacitor across the other two or a kickstart kit in this case in this case which goes across the run capacitor auxiliary terminals those two there are kickstart that one there's just normal run capacitor connections hmm. it doesn't want to start again that's odd why aren't you starting you piece of crap Okay, the potential relay is getting a bit sad. I just whacked it on the table and the contact obviously sprung open and it works again. 